Tech industry leaders have been spending a lot less time lately talking about their plans to change the world and a lot more time promising to change their work culture. It seems like every day another tech leader resigns or gets fired as more women come forward with stories of harassment and discrimination. The New York Times profiled more than two dozen women last week who detailed countless examples of systemic sexism in tech startups. Last month, as you know, Uber founder Travis Kalanick resigned under pressure as CEO following an internal review of the company's handling of harassment claims and other questionable practices. But not everyone thinks sexism is such a pervasive problem. Speaking at an event in San Francisco, Marissa Meyer, the former head of Yahoo, blamed Kalanick's failure on Uber's meteoric rise to success. Quote, I just don't think he knew, she said. When your company scales that quickly, it's hard. So... Is there a problem or isn't there? And if there is, will it get fixed? Joining me are Shirley Leung, business columnist for the Boston Globe and a GBH contributor. Nice to see you, Shirley. Michael Greeley, a co-founder and partner at Flair Capital Partners. Good to see you again. And C.A. Webb, founder of 5050 Project, whatever that is, we'll find out in a minute. And co-founder and former partner at Underscore VC. Join me now. Good to see you, Good too. To see you. Can we start with you for a second? I want to talk about what the scope of the problem before we decide whether it's worth fixing. Sure. So is the tech world... This testosterone-driven, predatory boys club. I'm serious. That we read about virtually every day in the newspaper. Or is that ridiculous hyperbole? Boys club, definitely. Testosterone-driven sometimes and predatory um, sometimes too. I think many of us in the tech world have had extraordinary experiences building careers there. But there are I, – I don't know anyone who hasn't heard a story of some woman who's been put in a compromising position or has a friend who um, – found raising money so extraordinarily difficult compared to her male colleagues. So you're a token man here, I should <laughs> yes, say. Mike. We are. Yeah. Uh, I know, that's why I'm here, too. I forgot about that. So we all read Susan Fowler, this one yes. blog that may have brought yeah. down a yeah. CEO. She's the one obviously wrote about her experience a at Uber. Are those aberrational moments, or are they more the norm? No, I, w I think, tragically, it's more the norm. I think it's systemic throughout the entire industry, and in part because we have a lot of very young, hyper- uh, competitive, successful entrepreneurs who've effectively just moved from college, from a campus environment, and now they're in a work environment without great mentoring around them. So are you almost saying what Marissa Meyer is saying? Is that, listen, no, 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 it's I, not really... What no, are you no saying? way could you forgive the behavior, but I'm acknowledging it exists. And the question is, why hasn't it come out in this such a spectacular fashion sooner. I mean, it's been there for because a long time. Because people don't want to lose their jobs. And when essentially yeah. women are climbing the ladder very slowly, they don't want to be thrown off the ladder. Isn't that potentially? The yep. So do you want to make it unanimous? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think, I mean, my, my column tomorrow is about w talking to women locally. I mean, this is not, the bro culture is not just in Silicon Valley. Cool. It's very much alive in Boston. Women uh, talk about uh, sexist comments. I mean, uh, perhaps they're not groping extreme cases, but there's a lot of uh, comments made to female entrepreneurs they would never say to men um, from things like asking them out on dates or, um, you know, or to uh, to ask them, are you, when are you going to start a family? If you're going to start a family. I don't know if I should give you money. But uh, these boys who have just never grown into men, and I'm not excusing them, I'm getting back to it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that is, it's like arrested development. And when you see some of these billionaires on television who were like teenagers practically or 20-somethings, you get a sense they never grew up. Yeah. I mean, is that not yeah. part of the explanation? Uh, it's hard to ignore that. And I do come back to the issue around mentoring. I think a lot of these uh, successful executives that we're now talking about haven't had great mentoring and haven't had the infrastructure on them to teach them how to behave as a senior executive. Doesn't excuse the behavior. Right. Part of it is the di very dynamics of, you know, uh, the venture capital industry. I mean, think about it. You have female entrepreneurs asking, begging for money from investors. The relationship, it's not a formal relationship. They're not employee, employer. Uh -huh. It's, it's, there are no rules. And so, I mean, if, if Well, there's this one rule, give the money to the men, not the women. <laughs> that New York Times story <laughs> that I mentioned a minute ago, 40 times as much money last year, 1.5 billion invested in women entrepreneur-led businesses, 58 billion. In, so you're the perpetrator, essentially. I mean, <laughs> generically you. I mean, wh what is the mindset that there, it's just tradition that men are the leaders that are more likely to succeed with our money? What's the, what's the mindset? Uh, I, I, uh, I have a hard time getting to that conclusion. I think there is a, there is a, a top of the funnel issue. We don't have enough great women entrepreneurs working through the system. And that's a, that's a failure that we probably started 20 and 30 years ago. We need more 
uh, great executives that happen to be women. We don't have that. You know, can I, uh, while we're picking on, the, I don't picking on the proper terminology, we're picking on the tech world. White House figures, I assume you saw the other day. Okay. Here's uh, this uh, White House under Donald Trump. Uh, the average woman, this is the median income, 72,000 female, 115,000 male, 63 cents on the dollar. And before you say, oh, there's Trump again, Barack Obama wasn't doing so hot either. He was doing better. At one point, it was an 18 uh, a cent gap. Then it went down to 11. But let's come back to Massachusetts for a minute. You write a story every year about the Boston Club when they put out their list of so-called zero zeros of the 100 publicly traded corporations. How many have zero women on the boards of directors? How many zero women in their C-suites, so to speak? You have written lately that that's getting a little bit better, yes? A little bit better, but not enough to really jump, break out the champagne for. I mean, it, it, the progress is really, really slow. So a lot more has to be done on that front. And, and is that because of the Boys Club thing? It's sort of like a self-engendering kind of deal, as that's who they know. A lot of the same men are on their other men's boards, and it's just hard to crack in kind of thing? Some of it is that, and, and some of it is that it, it's also the funnel issue. A lot of women drop out. I mean, they're, they, you need to have more women in the pop pipeline to make it into the C-suite. And once they're in the C-suite, then they, they become eligible for board but membership. See, see, but when I hear that, I, I, I say that's an answer if there's, a, there's an imbalance. But when you have zeros, and you celebrate it, maybe correctly, 15 to 9 was the number. went down to 9 of the top 100 that are zero zeros. But at the same time, I wrote down only 12% of women in executive level positions, 45 of the 100 companies, no women in executive positions, on and on like this. It's so extreme yeah. that and you can't just explain. Right. I mean, in the, in the case of the zero zero, oftentimes it's cultural, meaning that, you know, the, 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 the tone of the company is set at the top. So it's likely the CEO or chairman does not want change, does not um, promote women uh, through the ranks. And that's all, and, and a lot of those companies are kind of entrenched family establishments, establishments that it's very hard to, to, to kind of change the, the, the leadership there. Well, the most famous uh, family establishment has a woman at the top. Does it not? Fidelity? It does now. Uh, okay. Yes. So, uh, I think we've identified that there is a problem. Can we agree both masters? <laughs> yes. So we can move on to salute. What's this 50-50 deal you're doing now, Sia? So it's an initiative I've been thinking about for a while and that I've just been to one too many tech events where um, we're talking about how we get more women into tech and everyone in the room is a woman. So if 2% of the overall venture capital dollars went to women last year, 98% went to men. I'm pretty sure that we now know who's going to be do the, doing the hiring, who's going to be doing the angel investing, and who the next round of investors are going to be. So unless women and men start collaborating on this issue and build relationships and networks so that when I have to hire someone next, I look at someone different than I would have otherwise, nothing's going to well, change. Well, by the way, uh, 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 who would not celebrate that? But, I mean, so... Who, how it does, doesn't what, sound that how incendiary, do you, does How it? do you get from here to there? Okay, we should have 50-50. You write articles about Mayor Walsh creating some commission where companies are going to voluntarily give information on women. And which are the companies that disclose the information right. voluntarily? The ones that are doing well with women and the ones that aren't right. don't disclose anything. So the fundamental thing here is we have to stop, stop treating it like a women's issue. It has to be a human issue. It what has it to be an organizational what issue, mean? meaning that when we wring our hands over there not being um, enough women in an organization, it's not up to the women to go into a corner and problem solve around it. The C-suite has to get together and say this is a top three issue. If it's not an issue at the very top, it's basically irrelevant. Let me propose two uh, suggestions, yeah. solutions, and see your reaction. Yeah. One, you know, there are some Western European countries that actually have laws about these kinds of things, right. that certain percentages of boards must be women or there's dissolution. Does anybody think that's a good idea here in the United States? It's a pretty intractable problem. Nobody likes that, do they? I, you, I know, don't. Do you? Well, I'm, I'm certainly a fan of that. The debate is that what num what's the right number? Well, whatever. Where if I picked a number, number you could live with, can you oh, live absolutely. with a law like absolutely. that? Absolutely. Yep. Could you? Why don't yeah, you propose absolutely. that? I think we need da data, targets, disclosures. I've been talking to a bunch of limited partners in the venture world who, frankly, are feeling really embarrassed yeah. because they're realizing they haven't been asking the right questions for years now. Okay, here's the second solution. Why don't people like you say, the only way you get my money? is if there's a certain proportion of women in executive positions and in senior uh, leadership positions. Why not? I that? think the concern is around adverse selection that you're artificially constraining where I get to invest. Yeah, It's a exactly. systemic issue, so we can have a structural solution, and I think if we're talking about we can regulate to a solution. There's also uh, 
uh, a social media-like solution. In our industry about 10 years ago, the funded.com was launched and it allowed entrepreneurs to very publicly comment on behavior of general partners. Everybody's behavior changed immediately. And we need that kind of groundswell of transparency to come into the venture tech community. And you're hopeful that changes things. It's been a hell of a I, long time where change has not happened. It certainly changed behavior 10 years ago when the funded exploded. We all became very aware of our behavior. And we need that. And I think what you're seeing now in the media this week is going to shine a light on this issue. And I think behavior, is it enduring? I don't know. But in the near term, behavior, I think, will change. We'll have you back in six months. We'll read your column tomorrow, Shirley. It's great to see you. And Michael, thanks hey, for your time. Appreciate it. Good luck Thank with 50-50. Good to see you.